Hi, everybody. My name's Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel. And we are your family. You guys are our family. And we really appreciate those who listen in and read with us as we're reading. And we are um, yesterday, well, I guess it, we are pleased to announce a va- brand new revision, revision three of the Apocrypha that came out yesterday. Uh, Miss Nicole got this wrapped up. And so if you guys have a revision two <clears throat> right there, you will want to download a revision three and get yours updated because there have been a tremendous amount of changes in this as well. We are dialing these in and getting them ready for print. We hope to have the print done in about a week and a half, somewhere around there. We're rushing everybody here, trying to get everybody reading, and um, we are down to the last books of the Old Testament that we have to proofread, and we have some of the Apocrypha that the Elliots are putting together, and that's our dog, uh jerry and we're very very sorry that the dogs um speak up like this uh they just do that is what they do gentlemen how are you guys doing out there good Good. everything good yeah Yeah. what's uh what's new what's new in this world what are your what are your plans for the day well nothing new under the sun but today's dog bath day today's dog bath day but there it is new for us under the sun for today right 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 chapter one guys 31 31. okay i'm just getting my set up um, dog bath day today. What do you normally do around here, Jade? What's your What's your What is your job around this place? Uh, I usually work in the farm, but if it's not working the farm, it is uh, proofreading. Proofreading, yeah. Well, for right now, it's proofreading. What is your job normally, though? If it's not proofreading, um, working the farm. Working the farm, and so that is um, working the farm out in the middle of a jungle is a crazy thing because we have. Um, Enormous amounts of foliage out in the middle of a tropical rainforest, as most of you guys could probably understand. <clears throat> Kate, what do you do on a day-to-day job? What's your job? I am a graphic designer. You're a graphic designer, so you doodle to the uh, you doodle to the world, and you put that together. You well, like, like I match a bunch of pictures together for people. Is that what and it I is? Create logos. There's sometimes I doodle like where I make logos and stuff. But. Isn't that um, under uh, under repping what you do, just mashing things together? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff you do. The stuff you do, I, I mean, I will tell you. I lived my entire life in the IT world, my entire life. So I, in you know, four years at Google. So I've seen the very tippy top of the operations. I've seen this stuff. And some of the stuff you do is, um, is pretty high end stuff. There's, there's stuff I just cannot believe my own kid is able to do. And it is, uh, I would say from myself being in the professional IT world all my life, I would definitely say you're a professional graphic designer is what I would say. Eli, what do you do? What's your, what's your um, gig? I usually do a, a, the kind of chickens and I just work the farm and stuff. Work the farm. That, that kind of is, that sounds underrepping. You, it doesn't sound like there's much there. What does that mean, work the farm? Um, planting, plowing, weeding, usually those things. Tasks, like, stuff everywhere, here and there. Are you a gopher? Kind of. Go for this and go for that. Jobs, are you a gopher? Um, probably. We're yeah. all gophers around here. Yeah. Same, same around for all of us. And um, so that's it. That is what we do out here on the farm. Now, we are reading um, a very, very good book. The book, somebody give me a quick recap of where we're at. Eli, you haven't given us a recap yet, as of yet, I don't think. I did. Did you? Yeah. Let's try it again. What? What do you got? <laughs> uh, so, start with, uh, like, we we have Noah. We go, or actually, Noah starts a little bit with uh, Nimrod. It was a little bit about Nimrod, how he was, like, super powerful, and how Abraham's father, Tarak, always followed him around. Then we went back to the story of Noah, how when he was born, he had white hair and fiery eyes, and it, like, scared his father, Lamech, uh, or when he was born as well. Uh, he, like, got out of the womb and started praising Yahuwah. Um, and then uh, this scared Lamech. Lamech went to Methuselah. Methuselah went to Enoch. Enoch said it was all right. He asked Yahuwah. Then... Uh, after that, we get down to the, sto- uh, the flood. Then we have uh, Noah's kids. We have Cain, who, or we also have Noah's wife, who is of the seed of Cain. Then we have uh, Ham, who is the son of the seed of Cain. He's like half Cain. And then that's why he is basically like cursed, that, or why his son is basically cursed, because, uh, well, I don't know, maybe he's evil because of that, maybe. But uh, his son is cursed because of uh, his transgressions, or whatever that called um and after that we get a little bit about abraham uh how uh uh let's see how he was born uh, how he how he got uh, swapped by the white or by the son uh, with the son of the concubine how he went to the cave for three years or for 10 years and then he goes to the city with shem 
And how long was he in the city of Shem? Uh, 39 years. 39 years, okay. Long time. And then <clears throat> after that, now he's come back to uh, his father's rock. To rock. Okay, yeah, and so we are in um, one of Nimrod's little cities right now is where we are at. Um, for those who have never seen any of these writings or any of this stuff, these writings are available in the Yaz Scriptures um, pre-order right now. You can pre-order this, $59. Uh, 109 or 103 books. It is a large print, the largest print that we know that is out there um, in for anything like this. And so it's 14.5 font. And so it is a very, very, um, it's very, very limited as far as this edition goes, because there's only, we're only ordering a certain amount. We don't know in the future if we will order like a tremendous amount, but a lot of people have asked us, how do we get hard copies of it? <clears throat> this is how you get a hard copy of it. Um, get a pre-order in, and um, we will get it reserved. And the second it comes in, we will ship it out to you guys. We have a wonderful family in the States that is going to be shipping these and taking care of this. Um, and it's going to be pretty awesome because the whole point of Yah's scriptures is a prison ministry. <clears throat> and what we're attempting to do is we're trying to get one scripture for one scripture into prisons. So for every one scripture, it's, rough, it's a little more than one scripture, but it, roughly, just for the sake of this for every one for one and so when people purchase one we want to try to get one of the full 103 large print into our brothers and sisters in chains and our brothers and sisters in chains are very much worth it um, i've talked to a tremendous amount of guys in prisons um, now after we found out that the how you scripture had, had basically neglected all of their prisoners for many 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 years we took that over we opened up all their letters that they had thrown in the trash and we started sending Bibles to all these prisoners. And we have a tremendous amount of scriptures that are out already. And we've, I've never found, you know, these prisoners are all so awesome. They're very, very kind. They're very, very gentle guys. And that may sound like an oxymoron. We're talking about guys that are, that are in the clink for hardcore crimes. <clears throat> but most of the people that are in there, you know, there, there's, you know, when you live in the United States of America, one in four people have done jail time because it is such an incarcerated state. It is such a, it a, a, a prison state. And so it's not too hard to actually get into a jail. And so a lot of these guys have never, ever heard the name of Yah. They've never heard the name of his, his son. And so this is what we are providing to them and hopefully providing to them through this ministry. And so um, we can only do that with you guys and um, getting these. And I think they're an excellent value. Yeah, I don't think you'll find anything better than this. <clears throat> okay. Chapter 31. Y'all ready? Yep. Okay. Being led by the Ruach of Yahuwah, I found my father's house, and entering the gate, addressed the guard who was standing there, saying, Behold, I am Abram, son of Tarak, who hath spent these forty years in the house of Shem. Take me now to my father. Their guard stood as one dumbfounded, knowing not what to make of such a greeting, but at length called a boy whom he dispatched to locate my father. So this dude has a personal guard at his house. Uh, this dude is the, this guy is like the vice president of the United States, my friend. This is like a, um, uh, what is it? Camilla, Camilla, what's her name? Camilla what's, Harris. Isn't it, yeah, isn't it? I don't even know what the vice president of the United States is. Because <clears throat> they weren't elected. They were just were put into place. But yeah, this dude is like the vice president of the United States. So absolutely, he has guards. Absolutely, he's like a uh, no man. I mean, you can't you can't hang around King Nimrod without uh, gaining enemies. Uh, I'm sure there's always like every other place. There's always enemies. Okay, here we go. Four. At length, the lad returned, followed closely by my father, who was greatly surprised to see me, but who recognized me as his son by inspiration of the ruach of Yahuwah. By this time, my arrival had caused great excitement throughout my father's household, which was very large, and my mother, having heard of my coming. Hastened to the place where we were, weeping and rejoicing, for she had thought that I had wandered from the cave and had been slain by wild beasts in so, the wilderness. Forty years later, and she had no idea what happened to her son. He's like the ten-year-old disappeared. So he and just he's, like he's like disappear. Yeah, the ten-year-old walked away, and yeah, uh, that's what at yeah, three years old. That's what um, in in a dream to Abram. That's what Yah said. He said you need to wait here seven years and seven years. I think he was ten years old, right? Yep, he was ten. <coughs> he wandered away, and his, he never told his mom. No one informed no, him. No, he, wa he walked away. His mom, you think his mom gonna let him walk away from the cave? Mom, I'm, I'm ten no. years old. I'm leaving. No, they were all sleeping. He got up in the middle of the night, probably, or got up at some point and had the messenger of Yah, and he guided him here. And so his mom had no idea, so where he was. K okay, six, at length. She led me away to her chamber to talk with me, and I told her of all that had transpired with me since my leaving the cave of my being <clears throat> by the messenger to the city of Shalom, of being instructed under the direction of Shem, of the increase of my family, and of the mercies of the true Elohim, of the Shamaim, exercised 
in my behalf. I talked to her on the futility of worshiping mighty ones of wood and stone made by men's hands, which have no power in them, and of the order of the ancients, which were preserved in the city of Shalom under Noach and Shem, which I had sent, been sent to proclaim in the great city of Ur. My mother heard all the words and rejoiced in them, for she was one whose heart had been turned from the worship of dumb, of dumb mighty ones to the worship of the unknown Elohim. Moreover, a small body of like believers, <clears throat> numbering about 100 souls, met secretly in my father's house to worship the unseen Elohim and pray for further light concerning his ways, among whom were my brother Karan, Haran, with his son's lot and his daughters Melka and Sari, and my brother Nacor. Now, when my mother had heard my words, she bade me re remain with her until evening when the believers were to meet in her rooms. Wherefore, that night I met with those who had rejected the idolatry of their fathers, and they were all the, of the seed of those who had come out of the city of Peleg. Wherefore, I rehearsed unto them all the things I had told unto my mother, and they likewise rejoiced therein. But unto my father I spake not of these things at that time, for he was yet privy to Nimrod and was steeped in his evil ways. There's like a hidden set of believers here that decided not to go astray like everyone else did. So I bet they, I bet Nimrod doesn't like that in his little town. No, I bet he doesn't like it at all. I bet they'd all be killed, right? So 33. When I had dwelt in my father's house for seven days, teaching the word of Kai unto the believers, I went unto my father as he sat in his outer court with his servants attending to affairs of state. And when he would hear me, I said unto him, Father, where is the Elohim who created the Shemaim in earth and all the hosts of them? My father Tarak answered me and said, Behold, my son, those mighty ones who created all things are here with us in the house. My father, show them to me, I pray thee, I exclaimed. Whereupon my father Trock led me unto a chamber in the center of his house, wherein were twelve great mighty ones and numerous smaller ones. And my father said unto me, Behold, my son, these twelve great ones are rulers among the mighty ones, and this largest one is ruler above all, and these others were his assistants in creating all things. And my father Trock bowed down and worshiped before his mighty ones, and we departed from them. When I departed from the presence of my father, I went unto my mother and said unto her, My mother, there is, great, there is a great evil in this place, for my, my father keepeth a room full of mighty ones in the center of his house, which thing is contrary to the commandments of Elohim. Wherefore the wrath of Elohim shall not depart from this house until they are destroyed. Let one of the young men be sent, therefore, to fetch a kid of the goats, and make thereof savory meat for therewith. Shall I destroy these mighty ones in which there is neither life nor power? My mother therefore summoned one of the young men who was with her in the house and sent him to fetch a kid of the goats, whereof she made a great savory meat. When it was prepared, I took the savory meat from her and went unto the room where my father kept his mighty ones. And I prayed there unto Yahuwah, my Elohim, saying, O Yahuwah, Elohim of Shem and of Noach, look upon me here in my weakness and strengthen my arm, my arm that I might may destroy these false mighty ones and give me the wisdom and strength to go through all that follows and endure until the end in the service of my Elohim. When I had said these words, the Ruach of Elo Yahuwah <clears throat> fell upon me and even the Ruach of Nebuah. And I was led to exclaim, woe unto my father and this wicked and corrupt people among whom he dwelleth, whose hearts are all inclined to vanity for they serve mighty ones of wood and stone, the workmanship of their own hands, which neither eat nor smell, nor hear, nor speak, for there is no power in them. And those who serve them shall likewise be powerless to escape when the wrath of Elohim shall overtake them in a day, in a day they think not. All right, let's do the last one here. 35. At this time, the Ruach of Elohim fell upon me in mighty power to strengthen mine arm. And picking up a hatchet, which I had brought with me for that purpose, I destroyed all my father's mighty ones, both wood and stone by the power of Elohim which was in me, except for the largest in whose hand I placed the hatchet. Then going to my father, I said unto him, My father, I have seen a wondrous thing for my mother, for my mother did make me a savory meat this day to offer before the mighty ones who created all things. And when I took the meat unto the, in unto them, they all reached forth their hands to partake thereof. When the one who is ruler above all saw their words, he being angered, left the room and returned with a hatchet, wherewith he destroyed the other mighty ones, both wood and stone. And behold, he standeth there, even now with the hatchet in his hand and the savory meat before him. All right. There we go, gents. All right. That's so it. At this point, he's just messing with... Uh, messing. Wait, what, he's what, trying what, to get a reaction on him at this point, like figure out 
well, are you smarter than this or not? Well, so there you go. I mean, if these things are uh, the mighty in power, then um, him sticking an axe in that, it should be, it should be um, sensible enough, right? Yeah, the big one is going to go beat up the little ones. I think he probably talks about his explanation later, but we learn a lot about this in Jasher. Mm -hmm. This is another thing. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is not a first time we hear any of this story. This is, this is a multiple time. The story has been repeated throughout the Apocrypha, throughout the extracurricular books. Um, and it, it was a, uh, can you imagine? I mean, his father must not have been, um, like tough, like really, really tough. Right. Um, in the event, I'll, I'll just tell you in the event that I had mighty ones and then I would worship them and they were my entire life and you guys had come and you guys, I saw that you guys had like cut these things to, to have, I, I would probably done the old football tackle on you. I think this it would have been a little, a little, boom. I think based upon Jasher, I think uh, he goes Nimrod and sticks him in the fire here. I think that was the reason he stuck him in the fire. Was this? You're breaking. You're breaking all the stories. What are you talking about, man? You can't. You can't, uh, you can't be a Jasher. spoiler alert. Yes, based on Jasher, but that comes up. Yes. So yes, he, Abram gets into some trouble. He gets he gets into a little heat. That's for tomorrow. Yeah, that's for tomorrow though. He gets into a little heat, as they say. Uh, but Jebby is a, a spoiler alert on this. But um, this is a, an interesting story, right? Um, how it went down. Anyone have anything else on this? Um, no, it's just. Uh... We can see that uh, you're, if you're worshiping idols or statues, they can't move and they can't breathe, and uh, you probably shouldn't be worshiping them. Yeah, and you know, the Catholics, they have their rosary beads, they have their crosses, they have their idols, and they will get down on their knees, they will worship all of them. There is a tremendous amount of religions, so-called religions, where they all have these fake mighty ones. Um, the people, the, the wicked demons over at CERN, they all have, uh, I think it's either Kali or the, the, the six-handed goddess thing over there, the Not goddess... Sure. Shiva, that's what it is, the goddess of destruction, yeah, either Kali or, or Shiva, yeah, and so um, everybody has their mighty ones, right, and these things are all like wooden stone, they can't do anything, they, they haven't given us Torah, they haven't given us life, they didn't give us creation, they didn't breathe into us the breath of life, they are simply things that our creator has made, and people will sit and worship them, and to our creator, I'm sure it looks very silly, I'm sure it looks very um, sinful, it looks very stupid, because there, there's nothing there, you know. You're you're worshiping a rock. That's something, right? some, something you have a little more movement than. That's not something you should worship. Yeah, something you have a, a few more thoughts than the rock. You probably shouldn't be worshiping the rock, right? And so that's it. We have an Elohim. We have an Elohim Most High that lives. He breathes. He created all of us, and he calls us to be his people. He's called us out of Babylon. He's called us to be a a, a set apart people, a people who is different than all of the rest around us. That by our words and deeds and actions and our life that we are separated in the way we smell, the way we taste, the way we look, the way we, we treat others, right? Everything that we have should be different if our creator is Elohim most high and we revere his ways and his law, statutes, and commandments. And we are the family that believes his law, statutes, and commandments are good for all generations, for all times, for all kingdoms, for all people, for everywhere. It's 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 the what we need to be doing. So with that, everybody, um, we are going to get real super busy here, and we hope that you guys have a super busy day, and we love you all, and we hope you have a good week. We're out. All right, all right shalom. shalom.